Welcome to Upwards, sponsored by the Microsoft Aspire Experience, where we share stories and insights to help you grow 1% better in your personal and professional life every episode. Here are your hosts for today's episode, Zach Zhu and Jay Lee. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Upwards Podcast. Thank you for joining us. We have an excellent show for you guys today. And I will throw it over to my co-host, Jay Lee, to introduce her. Thank you, Zach. Today, we have joining us Stephanie Torgerson. And to give you an overview of who Stephanie is, she is a director at Microsoft that leads a team called the Technical and Communities Leadership Team. And they focus on developing talent, helping people connect, and also helping them achieve their full potential through something called IC Leadership. Stephanie is absolutely amazing and is super knowledgeable in developing people. So we're super excited for you to take a listen on this. Stephanie, thank you so much for your time. Could you give us an overview of who you are and what you do? Fantastic. Thank you for this opportunity there, Jay and Zach. It's exciting to join you. As you said, my name is Stephanie Torgerson. I lead a team called the Technical and Communities Leadership Team at Microsoft, which is really about growing talent, connecting people, and, and helping them to achieve their full potential. I've been at Microsoft now, gosh, going on 22, 23 years. And it it astounds me when I think about that number because I feel like I've still got so much to learn and do that the the chronological just doesn't match, hopefully, the the passion and the energy that I I have for this business and the work that we do. Awesome. And Stephanie, if you could uh, touch a little bit more upon the specific programs that are run within the technical and community leadership team. Well, sure. So there's two functions within the business. The first part around the technical, well, it's technical and community leadership. It's all around leadership. And so one aspect of the business is this portfolio of programs that we run that identify, develop, and retain individual contributor technical leaders. The other part of the business is around communities. It's a place where all individuals across Microsoft can come together, share information, share knowledge, learn from each other, and broaden their connection so that ultimately the work that they do for our customers or even internally really has the opportunity to bring the strength of Microsoft to bear because they're leveraging the expertise and the knowledge of those around them. That was an excellent introduction into uh, the work that you do. We went over the concept of individual contributor leadership, more colloquially known as IC leadership, in episode two of this podcast series, and was wondering if you could give our listeners an explanation of what IC leadership is again, and how that concept is a foundational building block of leadership as a whole at Microsoft. Oh, yeah, you're hitting to my passion there, Zach. So the work that we're doing now really started about 15 years ago give or take a little bit, but the concepts have evolved and and there's still so much we have to do. But the opportunity that arose at that point in time was individual contributors within this business are so important. They drive our connection with our customers. They extend knowledge and expertise. And that, that relationship is so valuable, but we were losing people because they weren't seeing pathways to grow. I see leadership wasn't necessarily, it was valued, but it wasn't in a way that was truly recognizable. And so we were losing talent to other organizations or they were leaving the company. And so I I had this incredible opportunity pop up to create this program to focus on identifying, so what does it mean to be an IC leader? Developing them, how do we develop them so that they can expand the scope, scale, and complexity of the work that they do so that they're deriving more value and benefit from the impact of their work and then ultimately with the goal of retaining this talent. And so that was a core business challenge that we dove into address. And again, going back like 15 years ago, but what we've seen is the business catch up with us. And, and the goodness of when Satya joined the company is he put into place this concept called the leadership principles around creating clarity, generating energy and delivering success. And those leadership principles apply to manager leaders or IC leaders. And it's this concept that anybody can be a leader. And so what's been really great through the work that we do is the capabilities that we see coming forward. And we've decomped a lot of individuals that are IC leaders across the business to understand how they do the magic that they do. We've decomped it down to a set of six, what we call technical leadership attributes. 
But the goodness is, is those apply to our ICs as well as our people managers. It really is how you lead people, create clarity, generate energy so that they can deliver success. Nice. So moving on from that, just to give our audience a little bit of a visualization, what does an IC leader look like and why is it important for early in career folks slash university hires to practice IC leadership? Well, I think at the root, actually, I don't think, I know at the root, it really positions an individual to accelerate their impact. You know, it's, it's this notion that everyone is a leader and everyone can lead. And, and so to me, that's incredibly empowering. And so I, I think that's the root of it. The other piece is it influences how you get things done and recognizing, you know, as I talked earlier around that, that beauty of community work, that's also the beauty of an IC leader is, is that you recognize the strengths of the people around you, their respective expertise, their knowledge, you understand your strengths and what you can bring to them. And you're also vulnerable and courageous to leverage their knowledge and expertise. You don't feel like you, you recognize you don't have to be, nor can you be everything. And so by leveraging those around you, leaning into that leadership, the, the impact that you can drive. Nice. So how do early in career folk engage in IC leadership? How do they practice it within their day-to-day -day journey of becoming a fully fledged leader, a fully contributing person who's driving as much impact as they can starting from the beginning? And what are those sort of action items new hires can take to really practice and develop and start their leadership journey? Oh, that, that is a really great question there. The things that I would recommend is first and foremost, building your network. And so looking around you and understanding who's doing what, how are they doing it? Why are they doing it? Getting to know those around you and the strengths that they bring. The other piece I would recommend is being clear around the success that you want to deliver and also being open to and curious around what else you can do. And then connecting the dots. Zach, I look at you and, and you're a prime example of someone who's brought this to life. I've known you now since what, September? So we're maybe six months, give or take a little bit you took the time to understand our business and then you also brought your passions in. And so you were able to create opportunity for yourself, add value to our business by aligning your passions to business outcomes. And it's unlocked incredible opportunity. And so the things I would highlight within you is, is you were curious, you really sought to understand the world around you and, and what we were doing, the people that you are engaging with and understanding their strengths and superpowers. And then, you connected those dots into some incredible opportunities that you've led. <laughs> well, that is a uh, very, very flattering, Stephanie. I, I really much appreciate it. But Jay has an awesome question to ask. Thank you so much for saying that, Stephanie. So you kind of gave a little bit of an example with Zach starting at Microsoft, bringing his passions in and I was wondering if you could kind of broaden that a little bit and tell us a little bit more about what leadership looks like and what impact looks like from that kind of leadership. Yeah. So again, I think what I provided in Zach is a great opportunity around as you build your career, some of those capabilities you can develop. What I would add to that is there's a maturation as one progresses in your career and it comes along with experience, but not necessarily a time and role, but just active learning. And again, as you navigate the environment around you, you know the players, what they're doing, how they're doing it, they're connecting the dots. There comes a point in your career when influence really starts to play key mm -hmm. and, and the ability to do more, drive a greater impact by influencing others. And this notion of leading, scaling, and delivering success through others, it's taking those ideas. So it's taking this great idea influencing others to see if, if they're getting excited, if they're buying into it, collaborating, and then kind of letting go of the idea as being yours and empowering others and inspiring others to take it forward. So there's a lot of growth as one progresses in their career around these concepts and the capabilities and, and how they're, they're really malleable and stretch. So being that catalyst or that like activation energy really for these projects to take flight. Absolutely. And, and, and you hit on a really sweet thing there, Jay, because that's our definition of technical leadership. It's all about inspiring others to positive action through influence, credibility, and courage. 
Yeah. And so I'm going to take a step back here because our audience are mostly early in career people. So sub five years at the company, maybe just graduated college. And so I used to be one of the organizers for growth groups, and that is a grassroots early in career EIC, as we call it at Microsoft, EIC program for people to meet weekly in groups of 10 to 15 people to learn about critical skills needed in their professional working lives. And what I've noticed from running growth groups is that when early in career people join Microsoft, most of them have no prior experience in whatever the team is working on. And so during the first few weeks that they start onboarding, they realize like, wow, everyone around me is an absolute expert in XYZ area, and I have no clue what I'm doing at all. And this inevitably fosters a feeling of imposter syndrome from day one, which inhibits their leadership skills and their ability to drive impact and influence others around them. And so the question I have here is, is there any advice that you have for EICs or university hires to overcome their imposter syndrome so that they can drive this kind of impact starting from day one? Yeah. Oh, I love this question. And for me, it really orients or shifting your mindset from I'm not enough, kind of why am I here? These people are incredible to what can I be? What can I learn? Really mm-hmm. embracing mm-hmm. that growth mindset. And instead of allowing yourself to some degree become intimidated by what we perceive this story of someone else to be, pivoting it to what can I learn about them? How did they get here? Why are they here? And how can I learn from them to enhance who I am and and what I bring to the table? So it's, it's, um, it's demystifying these stories that we allow ourselves to build around the situations around us and and, messing with the way that our brains are wired because in situations where we're stressed, our brain automatically generates that fight or flight reflex. And we form those stories that naturally put us, by, by the design of our brain, put us in this system where we're kind of the victim. And so, you know, do we fight or mm. do we do we run away from this situation? But if you mess with the, that brain wiring and you put position mm-hmm. from a growth mindset, what can I learn here? How can I continue to evolve, enhance, leverage these people around me so that I can become better and the work that I do is better? That's the, the biggest trick that I've learned. And I... Even myself in my, tw- my you know, 22, 23 years, I'll still find myself in those situations and I have to catch myself and remind myself or earn my seat at the table. They're here because they've got different expertise mm-hmm. than me. And so how can I connect the dots between their goodness, my goodness to create something even more powerful together? Yeah, totally. And we love the growth mindset here at Microsoft. <laughs> and that's a really interesting way to think about it because oftentimes people think, what can I do to contribute versus what can I do to learn first, which then automatically leads to contributing later on. Absolutely. But but I think that's also part of the pressure of our culture, which is great that it's evolving because we used to be so scorecard metric, outcome metric as a company culture. And really, again, one of the things that I would highlight within Satya is that evolution to learning, trying things, if they don't work out, that's not so bad. Learn from it, pick it up and keep pushing forward. You know, that grit, that tenacity that is so powerful when it's combined with a growth mindset. So Stephanie, you you said something that really resonated with me in the sense of seeking to understand and realizing that you're not the victim of imposter syndrome, but you're just surrounded by such incredible people and it's an opportunity to, to learn from them. So in a sense, imposter syndrome or the feeling of imposter syndrome from an early in career person is actually a good thing because you're surrounded by individuals who you can learn so much from and the amount of opportunity and potential for your own growth is absolutely exponential especially if you're kind of in that position of like wow everyone around me is an expert and i have no clue what i'm doing because you can learn so much Absolutely. But what I also challenge folks when they feel that way is always remember you're here for a reason. Mm. Someone hired you and saw the potential in you. You've earned your seat to be here. And so, you know, shifting it into that metaphor, and I'm going to mess this up, but something about the, you know, the rising tide raises all boats. You're here because you're just as smart as everybody else. And the beautiful thing about our culture of diversity is embracing the fact that all of us 
got here by different paths. You know, we had different mm. childhoods, different experience, yep. different educations, different beliefs. There's so much diversity. And the beauty of that coming together is there's only one perfect Zach. There's only one perfect Jay. And you are here for a reason. And so the, the value mm -hmm. that you bring is extraordinary. And by opening yourself up to continuously learn and be curious, just amplifies that all the more. That was so heartwarming. <laughs> <laughs> Super encouraging. Thank you. <laughs> and so what I'm hearing is that people are action driven. And so if they want to either not necessarily overcome this imposter syndrome, but kind of establish their leadership and their impact. How can early and career people kind of position themselves within their team or within Microsoft such that they are in a more advantageous position to impart this kind of impact down the road? Yeah, that's a really great question. Be curious and jump into things. When I think about career development or when I coach around career development, I always think of the movie Monsters, Inc. And, it, and, and, and they're, they're there and they see all of these doors coming by and they have to decide which one to jump into. And ultimately, they're jumping into a lot of, a lot of doors, not the same, obviously not yeah. the same one at the same time, but they're just jumping into these experiences. And so my advice for folks early in career is jump into experiences. You know, be curious, be that person who's raising their hand to help out or ask around the work of others because people always want to share the work that they're doing. They're always willing to have other folks engage. I, I can't think of a time in my career when someone said, no, don't, don't help me out with that. I don't, I don't want anyone <laughs> else beside me, but be curious, jump in. And then the piece I would add to that is as you jump in and, and you, you look at those doors swinging by and you decide to what, what to jump into, you'll learn from it. As you jumped into these opportunities, mm -hmm. did you get energy from it? Did you did it light you up? Or was it an experience where you're like, oh, gosh, I wish I hadn't volunteered to help on this thing because it's just draining my energy? And be aware of that. And as you start then being more selective about your doors and the opportunities, gravitate toward those that give you energy and explore why. Because that, that is what opens up your passions and, and can lead you to choose those experiences as, as well as build skills and capabilities on, on top of that. So building off of Monsters Inc. and that sincere curiosity and seeking to learn and trying to develop all sorts of aspects and searching for passions and just growing on that energy of being you in this giant world of real life. Do you have a story that relates to driving impact and seeking that curiosity and learning about your passions from when you were early in your career? And uh, can you kind of give us a frame by frame of that entire experience and the resources you leaned into to be successful? Yeah. So I was really fortunate pretty early in my career, I fell into this space around people and started out my career doing human resources, had this incredible opportunity to, to dive into to training and development. And then within the company that I was at at that time, as, as I was starting my career, it kind of hit the cap of what I could do there. And so I had this great opportunity to come to Microsoft. So came to Microsoft and again, there continued to grow my career around all things people. So we moved out of human resources into SAP change management, all around getting our users onto SAP, ensuring that they understood the why, the, the training development, the facilitation that went along with that. It was all around that people space. But I, I started hitting a point in my career a couple of years at Microsoft where I felt like I needed a focus. I needed a career path. That's what grownups did. And so I started leaning toward this business manager slash chief of staff path. And I, one of my mentors, one of my most favorite people on the planet hired me into this role. I started doing it for six months, lots of budget, lots of budget, lots of spreadsheets, lots of finance conversations. And I learned a heck of a lot but I am not a numbers gal, not a numbers gal. And so I had the opportunity to, to kind of pause and reflect. And then this opportunity opened up. My manager came into my office one day and said, hey, we've got this business problem. Norm Judah, who was our chief technology officer at the time, had been hit up to solve this problem of individual contributors leaving the business, being dissatisfied. And he said, you've got this training and development background thing would you want to take this on? You're going to have to give up the business management thing. 
but would you want to do this for a while? It's going to be a short-term gig. Don't know how it's going to pan out. Do you want to do this? And it was very much my own swinging doors moment of, I could stay in this space. It's depleting my energy, but I, I could, there's a career path I see, but this thing sounds really cool. And what I learned from myself through that experience is again, it's back around the people that I love, empowering people to achieve their goals and ambitions to me is the coolest thing on earth, as well as this beautiful combination of looking at where our strategy is going, looking at our people, and then looking at the capabilities and how do we munge all of that together so that we inspire people in a way that drives our business forward and helps them achieve their goals. And so I stepped into what was a short-term project and now, like I said, almost 15 years later, I'm managing a business that went from a proof of concept pilot to four programs in a portfolio that's focusing on developing our talent and this cool business around connecting people within this ecosystem that is communities of practice. So just leaning into your passion and then being intentional around how you do it, listening to people, collaborating with people, all of those things that I, I coached around early in career continuing to harness those skills and be intentional around it. That's awesome, Stephanie. I absolutely love how you kind of took a leap of faith, dove straight into an area of passion and really built a business around it. And one of my takeaways from what you just said there is that you're able to kind of lead with impact and have influence no matter what role you choose to take on, it's more so about how much you put in and what you wanna get out of it as well. So I think kind of thinking from our listeners' point of view, a lot of them are in different roles. So there's business program managers, people in finance, people in engineering program managers, everyone and everywhere. And oftentimes you are intertwined with people working on different projects And so one question here is that depending on the role, is leading with impact limited to certain roles? And if not, which I'm assuming it's not, how can people lead with impact in their different roles and take advantage of it? Yeah. Well, and I would pivot that question just a little bit and and nuance it into leading with influence. Mm -hmm. Because in, in my opinion, by leading with influence, ultimately, all roads lead to impact. Yep. And so to me, influence is getting people excited about what you're doing, seeking and securing their opinions and using their opinions to shape the work that you're doing so that they get bought in. You know, They see their ideas manifesting in what you're doing and then they become your supporters, your proponents, part of your V team. And so there's this snowball effect that as you influence and you generate excitement around what you're doing, not holding your ideas as precious, but sharing them as something that can take on a life of its own, that that inf- level of influence leads to impact. Yeah. And I would say that's true in any role that you are. And mm. within that is not holding your ideas precious and also not waiting for permission. <laughs> you know, I, th- I think that so many times people hold themselves back and they think they have to be in this little box that's that more often than not is self-defined. And so seeing opportunities to break through that box. And and again, I'm going to use the Zach example, understand the space that you're in. It's not a box, it's a space. And then understand what you can do around that box, how you add value to that box. And then again, influence, share that idea and let it grow with those around you till it becomes a thing. And sometimes you're not, you know, just some of our roles don't allow for that amount of latitude, or we've got some leaders that don't want that kind of latitude. And I would say don't, take that as the norm and don't take that as a no. Keep looking for those opportunities that light up your passions. What an absolutely phenomenal conversation, Stephanie. We've talked about individual contributor leadership. We've talked about leaning into your passions. We've talked about seeking curiosity and learning from others. And we've topped it all off with that cherry on top of leading with influence and driving impact across the board, regardless of what position you're in. After listening to this podcast today, what are some things our listeners can do to jumpstart their leadership development journey. Oh, Zach, I think you'd honestly just gave them the guidance. I would encourage everyone to pause and reflect on those messages that you share and think about how they're showing up. How are they curious? How are they demonstrating that growth mindset and challenging themselves to consistently learn? How are they leaning in and embracing 
the expertise and the knowledge that they bring, how they got there. How do they think about influencing and connecting with the people around them, both those immediately, but then also going out in concentric circles. And, and again, through that, being curious and learning as they do that. And then also thinking about what throughout all of this gives you energy and lights you up. And how do you start recognizing that so that you can go after more of that as you build your career? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Stephanie. That was amazing. Yes, yeah, Stephanie, really appreciate your time and energy here. Loved learning from you on your leadership development journey and can't wait to kind of take some of these lessons and implement it later on. Fantastic. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Zach. Whoo! Wow. Jay, I don't know about you, but listening to that interview again really gets me hyped up to, to go out and pursue my own leadership journey. Like we talked about so many different things. Uh, mm -hmm. such as influencing without authority, finding your passion, anybody can lead with impact, collaborating with others, like, oh man, all sorts of exciting things that really mean the most, especially whenever uh, we're getting to work with people on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, exactly. And for our listeners out there, if you are an IC and if you feel imposter syndrome, just know that you are not alone there. Everyone who is a new hire is in your shoes and just know that you also have that impact. And based off of Stephanie's journey, what I'm taking away is to kind of find out what my passion is and pursue it mm. and turn that into impact later on. Right, right. Because ultimately at the end of the day, if you're really passionate about your work, you're inevitably going to be super good at it, right? Yeah. It'll just take some time. No, yeah, 100%. And uh, just getting that confirmation from somebody who has so much seniority at Microsoft saying that leadership doesn't require you to be in the manager role. Like you don't have to manage people mm -hmm. directly to be a leader and to drive impact is uh, just really inspirational, especially for people like us who are new hires. I don't know about you, but it gives me extra motivation to really go out there and try to do things that I might not be like super comfortable with doing. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes maybe you're not thinking what you're doing on a daily basis has that sort of influence. But if you look at it 10 years from now, maybe you'll think, oh, that one interaction I had with that one person in that one meeting room, that's the reason why I'm here doing what I do. Yeah. So passions really lead to all sorts of different opportunities. Well, based off that entire conversation with Stephanie, it's always a pleasure, Jay. And I'll see you on the next episode. Yep. See you there. Thanks for listening, y'all. Thanks for listening to Upwards. Be sure to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform and leave us a review. Learn more about the Microsoft Aspire experience at aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Aspire experience. We'll catch you next time on Upwards. Upwards.